So I'm Noah with MRP. I'm going to take you guys through a typical chain guide install today on this nice, clean Santa Cruz Carbon Nomad. Um, you may have noticed that chain guides have gotten more popular really over the past year or so. Um, there's a few reasons for that. Um, probably first and foremost is the advent of 10-speed drivetrains and wide ratio cassettes has really opened up the possibility to run uh, a single ring front drivetrain and still have plenty of gears for climbing and descending. Um, probably another reason that it's gotten, um, that chain guides have gotten so popular is the uh, emergence of really capable full suspension bikes in the five and six inch travel um, range. Bikes that are capable of riding terrain that was previously reserved for free ride bikes, downhill bikes. Um, so really rough, rocky terrain. Um, where chain management has become really important. So there's a variety of different chain guide systems out on the market these days. Um, we make them not only for single ring use, but also for dual ring use. So you don't have to go to a single ring up front. We make uh, the two by chain guide and the LRP chain guide for people that want to have two chain rings up front for even wider selection of gears. Um, but today we're going to focus on a uh, one by 10 setup and I'll take you through a few of the things you need to know about setting that up. So there are a few things you'll need to know about your bike and your setup um, in order to pick out a chain guide. Probably first and foremost you need to figure out if you're going to go with a single ring or a dual ring guide because there's a big difference there. Um, next, you'll need to know what size chain ring you plan on using. In this instance, we're going to use a 33 tooth chain ring. And almost most importantly, you want to know if your bike has ISC G05 tabs, like this bike does, or ISC G tabs, which look a lot like this. They're just in a slightly smaller bolt circle diameter. Or even if your bike has no tabs at all, we make guides that will mount directly to the bottom bracket. You'll notice on this bike, there's a spacer behind the drive side bottom bracket cup between the cup and the shell. Um, for our bottom bracket mount guides the back plate is going to replace that spacer. So for pretty much any bike out there on the market we have some sort of solution but knowing uh, what your bike will take is, uh, is key to picking out the right chain guide. First off I'm going to install the back plate onto the frame. As I said before this has ISC G05 mounts so I've got a corresponding back plate that matches up to those mounts. Um, this guide right here is the MRP G2 SL. This is actually in the mini version. So this is optimized for 32 to 36 tooth chain rings. Um, this is actually a special version of this guide we call the medium angle. Um, so for VPP bikes or any bikes that have kind of a low chain stay in this area, this guy's back plate makes a little more room to accommodate that suspension design. So it basically widens the distance between the upper guide and the lower guide. So to install, we're going to have three ISCG screws that will thread through the back plate into these holes. Um, and we're going to use spacers behind the back plate to line up um, the chain ring with the pulley wheel. In this case, I usually just start guessing. I usually start by adding just one spacer. You'll, it'll, your guide will come with nine spacers. You might start off by using just one and see how that looks when you have it all fitted up. Um, but in some cases, you might need to add as many as three on each bolt hole. Every bike is different. Um, it depends on if your ISCG tabs are flush with the face of the bottom bracket, recessed, um, what cranks you're using. So it's really just a trial and error thing. So it's important to take time to set it up right the first time. You only have to set it up once, so it's, it's kind of important. Just set it up right one time and you won't ever have to mess with it again. But definitely take time in doing that. So when it's time to mount up the crank, you should already have your chain ring installed. Um, if you don't have your chain ring installed, make sure you install it 
on the inside of the crank spider's tabs. This will yield about a 49 to 51 millimeter chain line depending on the crank. And that's what we have our uh, guides designed for. You don't want to mount this chain ring to the outside. That's going to push your whole chain line outboard too far um, and probably cause a lot of rubbing um, at either end of the cassette. So installed on the inside of the tabs. Um, you have a couple choices here as far as what chain ring bolts to use. You can use your uh, stock chain ring bolts. Um, our guide kits come with spacers that'll take up the space um, where your now absent outer ring was. So you can use that and use your longer stock chain ring bolts. Or we also make um, bolt kits for single chain ring applications that are shorter, uh, which is what we've used in this case. Either way, um, really no difference. Um, maybe just cosmetic. I think these look a little bit nicer. You don't have these uh, washers sticking out. But either way, you don't have to worry about getting new chain ring bolts. Um, if you don't want to, you can just use the spacers that come with the kit. We usually tell people too that the when you're setting up a single ring guide, it's best to use a chain ring that's designed for that application. A single chain ring, uh, or excuse me, a single ring drivetrain chain ring that has no shift pins. Um, these are a little bit thicker, so you'll have less wiggle room. The chain will have less wiggle room. Um, you'll get better retention performance. It'll be a little bit quieter. These are a little bit thicker, so they'll last longer. Um, there's a, a number of benefits there. You can use like uh, the chain ring that was probably already existing on your crank set. In most cases, that's a 32 or 33 tooth. That's totally fine. Um, but when it, that wears out and you need to replace it, uh, your best bet is to go with a, with a single ring specific chain ring. So now we have the chain ring all mounted, uh, the back plate mounted to the frame itself. We're gonna install the drive side crank arm. Try to get that snug up against the uh, drive side bottom bracket uh, so we can check spacing of the uh, back plate, make sure everything lines up all perfectly. Um, so definitely don't be afraid to tap that with a hammer or whatever to make sure that it's all the way seated onto that bearing. Um, so with that on, we can actually bring the chain around and mount that back up to the chain ring. So it's good to just uh, release the tension in the chain, maybe grab the, the pulley arm of the rear derailleur and bring it so it's slack. And then mount it up. With that on, we can go to installing the upper guide. This is a two-piece upper guide, so there's no need to disassemble the rear bolts of the upper guide. You can simply just uh, pull it open like that, kind of sandwich the chain put the two pieces back together and then screw this in using a four millimeter. We have captive hardware in the back plate of our guides now so the actual nut portion is a part of the back plate. You don't have to worry about finding that in your 30 workshop or anything. Uh, it's right there in the back plate. important thing when you're snugging that down is not to go too tight. Um, just make sure it's tight enough. Uh, don't get too ham-fisted on that. You are tightening against plastic, so if you're expecting a hard stop, you're never going to find it until the plastic actually cracks. Um, it's probably the most common issue we see with these guys. guides is uh, people just getting a little overzealous with the tightening. These bolts have Loctite on them. Um, there's a little bit of compression of the plastic when you tighten it anyway, so it's really on there pretty tight um, without getting too crazy with the torque. So line that up. At this point, with the upper guide mounted, you can kind of check your spacing. You want to see that the chain, when somewhere in the middle of the cassette, is directly lined up with the seam of the upper guide. It's a pretty good indication that you're going to get uh, the full range of your gears without getting rubbing on either the inside or the outside of the upper guide. So with the upper um, guide mounted, 
and since I've checked my spacing and I'm lined up pretty well, I can move on to the lower guide installation. There are, I guess here, what, four, five elements to the lower guide. Um, this is the lower guide cover, the bolt that passes through, um, the nine tooth pulley, and then there's one silver washer that's going to go on the inside of the pulley. With the silver washer, you want to make sure if you look really closely, you'll notice there's kind of a, it's a stamped piece. So there's a sharp side and there's a dull side. Um, for the best performance, we like to make sure the dull side is facing the bearing. So when you tighten this all down, that there's no sharp edges going into the bearing, uh, potentially dragging it down. Um, there's an additional piece to the lower guide, um, one screw that mounts actually from the back, but we'll mount that uh, last of all, because we'll need to uh, adjust the position on the track um, and get it all mounted up before we go to tighten that down fully. So to mount the lower guide, I usually find it's easy just to kind of bring the chain up and over the pulley, find that captive nut in the back, and it's pretty easy then to just tighten it down. Again, same as the upper guide, don't go too crazy when you're tightening this down. Um, you're not totally compressing plastic when you tighten it down. There's actually a brass fitting pressed into this piece, but there definitely is a possibility for over tightening. This is a, again is a, a lock tighted bolt, so it's pretty secure in there with just finger tightening. So lower guide positioning, we have a, a track down here. One end says 36, one end says 32. Um, because we're using a 33 tooth chain ring in this application, uh, the position of the lower peg of the lower guide is going to fall somewhere basically in the middle of that 32 and 36, uh, kind of maybe more biased towards the 32. So just want to make sure it's in that position. Get it pretty close to the 32 there. That should be pretty good. Snug it down a little bit. Check for drag in the system. Seems to be flowing pretty easily. Um, a lot of times to really fine tune your guide to cancel out some of the noise, if you just take really small incremental changes to the position of this lower guide, it actually makes a pretty big difference as far as the whizzing you hear as the chain goes up and over the pulley. You can cancel a lot of that out if you just uh, kind of take time and just make small changes um, in that respect. Um, so with the lower guide installed, um, we have one more uh, bolt to secure the lower guide itself. Um, this is a new part for us. We started including this in the G2SL guides last year. Um, it threads right into the back of the lower peg and it just threads right in. This isn't critical to the guide's function, but it does beef up the strength of the lower guide a little bit. Um, with this lower bolt installed, there's no real way to pull the guide off the front. Um, the head of this bolt prevents it from being pulled through, so beefs it up a little bit. Um, even with the bolts installed, you maintain the ability to position the lower guide on the track. Um, so just a little added feature that we started including last year. So get that all installed and uh, your guide's pretty set up. The lower guide and the guide itself, at this point we probably want to double check the upper and lower guide position just to make sure it's not going to interfere with the chain stay and that the upper guide is in pretty much 12 o'clock this bolt is in about 12 o'clock position from the center of the of the uh, crank spindle here so in this case the positioning looks pretty good um, that's kind of one of those things like the lower guide positioning itself that you can kind of fine tune um, just based on your riding experience um, to either make the guide function a little bit quieter or maybe give you a little more ground clearance obviously tilting a little more clockwise is going to position this skid um, to provide a little more ground clearance um, but those are really just fine tuning things um, the big thing is just that it doesn't interfere with the suspension the chain's not going to rub on the chain stain um, other than that that's pretty much all you need to look for so if we're pleased with this positioning, at this point we can do the final tightening down of the ISD tabs. Um, so just tighten those down. 
This is pretty much metal on metal contact, so there will be a pretty hard stop. Most cranks you can pass the tool right through to tighten them down. There's no need to take the drive side arm off. So that's pretty much it. Um, the only thing we're missing now is the non drive side crank arm. Um, so we're just going to install that. Uh, take it for a parking lot test, make sure everything is shifting smoothly in the back and we got no rubbing. Um, and if we're confident in the setup, then we're going to go for a ride.